Welcome to this video on the Leaving Cert Ag Science Predictions and Tips video 2024. So we're going to start and have a look at the exam layout for this year. So as was similar to last year, the total marks for this written paper is going to be 300 marks. So you've 100 marks already covered by handing off your project a few weeks back now at this stage. The paper is going to be 2.5 hours in length um, and that is at both levels, so both higher and ordinary level, the same for the 300 marks. Your paper is going to be split into two sections. It's going to be split into section A and section B. Section A, there's going to be an increase in choice this year. OK, so some of these changes came in due to COVID. So there's going to be an increase in choice. Um, there's going to be 12 questions provided and you then have to answer 10. Along with this then, so in addition, there will be some internal choice uh, through internal options in four of those questions. So lots of choice there, lots of options. Section B, there will be an increase here as well in terms of your options. So there will be six questions provided and you have to answer four of these questions. So there's going to also then be internal options in two of those questions. So again, lots of choice and lots of options there in section B. Section A comprises of short questions. Section B comprises of longer type questions. Moving on then to the timing of the paper. So as mentioned already, the paper is 2.5 hours in length. OK, and it's one of these papers where you are going to be working right up until the end of that 2.5 hours. So my advice then for you um, is that timing is really, really important here. And in terms of the breakdown, I would spend five minutes at the start of the exa exam just checking the paper kind of having a flick through the questions and marking questions that you think that you would like to answer. So either maybe with a red pen, putting a star in the top of the page or with a highlighter, just marking off the 10 short questions that you would like to answer and the four long questions that you would like to answer. I would spend 10 minutes at the end of the exam checking over my answers, making sure that I've answered uh, the correct amount of questions and that I filled in everything that I possibly can. In terms of the rest of the time, then I would advise spending 45 minutes on section A and around 90 minutes on section B. So you can see uh, significantly more time there on section B. We'll go through the breakdown of the marks in a few minutes and you'll see why it's more important to spend your, a lot of your time on section B because it's worth considerably more marks. So some predictions then, I suppose, for 2024, as this is a new course, OK, I suppose we can't really uh, predict too far ahead or um, uh, predict too precisely what will come up. But what we can look at is common patterns and trends from the previous three papers. So from 2021 until 2023. So what has definitely been asked, OK, there is no set, I suppose, uh, way that these questions will come up or there is no set question numbers where these questions or topics will come up. But what definitely has come up in the past three years are experiments. So they featured quite heavily on the Leaving Cert paper over the last three years. So up to five experiment questions on some of those Leaving Cert papers. And considering there are only 20 specified practical activities, this is a really good place to start with your study. So definitely looking at your experiments. Definitions then, as with any of our science papers, are really important. It's important that you learn those specifically, um, and they definitely have come up across all topics and all chapter areas. Something that has came up too out of the past three years is a short question on either a catch or an energy crop. Now, this is a higher level only question, so we're only talking about the higher level paper, paper here. And I suppose due to the fact that this is a higher level only topic, this is why it has featured on two out of those three papers. OK, you have a choice as to which you choose. So you can choose a catch or an energy crop. You are not expected to study both and you will have the choice in the exam as to which of these crops you answer on. And within that, then you have a choice as to which catch or which energy crop you choose to answer on. There has been a really big focus on the environment and sustainability over the last three years. So that's really important. And we'll look at that in a little bit, uh, a little bit more detail later on in the PowerPoint. There has been a big focus as well on data analysis style que questions and comprehension style questions also. So data analysis style questions, meaning tables, graphs and figures and interpreting, analyzing and concluding on those figures, graphs and tables. 
Comprehension style questions, meaning there has been small written pieces on the paper and you have to read those pieces and take answers from those pieces. So typically we're seeing those pieces coming from places like the Farmer's Journal, Agriland, Chagas, um, places that you would have researched, I suppose, for your IS. So you're probably familiar with some of those sources that I've mentioned. So the course structure in terms of um, kind of getting your study in order over the next few weeks. The course is split into four distinct strands and all of these strands have appeared on the Leaving Cert paper over the last three years. So strand one being scientific practices, strand two being soils, uh, strand three being animals and strand four being crops. And within all of those strands, then we're looking at um, our specified practical activities, which I mentioned have featured heavily over the last three years. Outside of those four strands or topics, there have been overarching themes that have came up or um, feature in all of those four strands. So those are health and safety, very important, has definitely came up on the paper, technology, breeding and genetics, sustainability and the environment, as we've mentioned already, policy and economics, nutrition and food production. So just make sure that within each of those four strands, you have a good idea as to those eight overarching themes within those four strands. So this year, you may be familiar with the project brief that I have on the top of the screen. So this year's topic for your IS was maintaining natural resources. And what we've seen over the last few years is Depending on what the project brief was, there was a bit of a focus then in your exam paper on that brief. So this year, as I say, the IS brief was about maintaining natural resources. So I've included some examples here as to ways that we could maybe maintain natural resources on Irish farms. So some examples of things that may come up in terms of uh, what you've already studied, studied within your different topics, or maybe even as a data analysis or a comprehension style question. So things like looking at EBI, Economic Breeding Index, and things like extending the grazing season. Number two would be maybe substituting clover for chemical fertilizer. That would be one way of maintaining natural resources in terms of our soil, water quality, air quality. And number three, changing to protected urea as a form of nitrogen fertilizer, again, maintaining our soil, water and air quality. Number four, reducing losses from slurry. So looking at our low emission slurry spreading. Number five, then looking at energy efficiency and renewable energy, especially within the farm layout section or that experiment. Question six, incorporating, or sorry, topic six then, incorporating forestry and hedgerows on farms, a focus there on bio, uh, biodiversity. And then number seven, looking at ways of improving water quality. So they would be seven areas uh, that will be important that you look over over the next few weeks in terms of maintaining natural resources. So it may just feature on this year's paper due to the project brief being maintaining natural resources in Irish agriculture. So moving on then to kind of the nitty gritty stuff, let's have a look at section A and section B. OK, so section A, as we've already mentioned, is the short questions in the paper. There will be 12 questions and you need to answer 10. It's very important here that you know your definitions. OK, remember, they are short questions. OK, each short question will be worth 10 marks. You must answer 10. So section A is worth 100 out of the 300 marks. As I mentioned earlier, the five minutes at the start of your exam that you're going to spend reading through the questions, it will be important that you put a mark or a tick beside the 10 questions that you will answer and try not to leave any part of a question blank. Moving on then to section B, as mentioned previously, these are longer type questions and you need to answer four out of the six, six questions that you are given on the paper. What's important here would be to practice your data analysis and comprehension style questions. So typically they would come up in this section. And again, in that five minutes at the start of the exam, it's important that you would put a mark or a tick beside the four questions that you will answer. What we're seeing in section B is that the questions are on a mixture of all topics in all questions. So there is not going to be, for example, a set question on grass 
or on dairy or on soil. They tend to mix in all of the strands, all of the different topics, all of the overarching themes within these questions here. So we call those questions synoptic style questions. So a mixture of different chapters, different topics here. So just be prepared for that. OK, in terms of preparing again over the next few weeks, the most important thing is practicing your exam papers. And with that, then knowing how to read a marking scheme and seeing where are the marks coming from. So this is just one example of a marking scheme. So you can see the question in italics at the top. It's asking you to describe with the aid of a label diagram how to isolate and grow bacteria from the root nodules of clover. So this is an example of a specified practical activity. So what you can see here is over on the right hand side, you need to have three points and they will give you four marks for each correct point that you have. So that would mean this question is worth 12 marks. You can see all of the uh, writing in the middle there. They are the different points that would be accepted. Anytime that you see a forward slash means that they will accept that as a new answer. You can see on the bottom of the screen, it says that there are marks awarded for the diagram also. So it's really, really important when you're answering on your experiment or specified practical activity questions, if they give you the option to draw a diagram that you draw a labeled diagram. OK, we might be under a little bit of pressure, a little bit of stress while we're answering these questions in June. So it's no harm drawing a diagram in case you've missed out on something in your method. The other important thing I would say there when answering on your experiment questions is to try and bullet point your answer. Make it really clear and easy for your examiner to read through your questions. So that kind of ends, I suppose, guys, um, all of uh, my tips and predictions for the 2024 paper. So for the last few minutes, we're just going to have a look at our complete revision package. So hopefully that video helped you. If that is something that helped you, hopefully you might be interested in um, getting our complete revision package with exam revision. So in our complete uh, revision package, you will get on-demand video tutorial grinds 24-7 within whatever subject you choose or multiple subjects if that's what you choose. So there are bite-sized video tutorial grinds on each topic. There's PowerPoint presentations, H1 or distinction notes. There is exam and mock paper questions with the marking schemes. So I've mentioned that in our video. It's really, really important over the next few weeks that that's how you are organizing your study, that you're practicing exam papers and you are looking at marking schemes. There are some uh, revision quizzes for you there. There is a reflection log to let you know how much or what um, topics you have covered within a subject. And at the moment, there is 10% off this package with the code 2024 tips. So we've eight junior cycle subjects available. What will be important to you are the 17 leave insert subjects that we have available here at exam revision. So you can see the list on the screen there, quite a lot of subjects available. So I'm just gonna give you a really quick walkthrough on our complete revision package. So I'm logged in here to my exam revision profile. You can scroll down and see all of the different um, subjects that are available. So I'm just going to click in here to Ag Science. So when I click in, you can see up at the top here, I have my progress tracker. So every time I do some more work, it's going to come up here. What percentage of the course I've completed? It will tell us how many days in a row that we have revised, how many videos we've watched and how many quizzes we have completed. We have our exam questions and our American schemes, and then we have past papers for you as well. So you can see here we have the four strands that I mentioned in the video, strand one, two, three, and then four on animals. OK, so we might just click in uh, just for example into biological characteristics of soil. So within each of these topics, we have video tutorials. OK, so there's a couple there on the side as well. We have presentations OK, in the form of a PowerPoint. We have notes that you can download or read through. We have quizzes. And then we have the exam questions. So it's very easy for you there, I suppose, all of the exam questions on soil or biological uh, characteristics of soil in this case are there for you along with the answer. 
Okay, so what you can do as well, you can build your own little exams there and you can also set a timer for yourself, which is handy if you're practicing your timing or that's something that you would need to work on. So just to finish then, guys, here are some of our student reviews. OK, so you can read through those. And then to finish off, guys, we do have some one day intensive revision courses coming up in May. OK, so if this video helped you, maybe it will be something you're interested in. There are three hour intensive revision courses across all of our subjects. OK, so they're going to run from Saturday the 18th to Sunday the 26th of May. So you can visit our website to book those. Thank you for listening, guys. I hope that helped. Best of luck in June and hopefully we will see you on some of our revision courses very shortly. Thank you.